Welcome back. I'm the doc, Bob Lee. You know, the Bronx has been hit hard with COVID-19. And joining us with information on the health in our borough, we have Charmaine Rudder. She's a project director for Bronx Health Reach. Welcome, Charmaine. Thank you, Bob. It's good to be with you. Isn't it? it it's, these are unusual times. Tell us about some of the things that you're going through right now, being quarantined and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, New York City being the epicenter with our stay-at-home um, executive order by the governor. I've been home. I, I've kind of even lost track. I think this may be our fifth or sixth week um, sheltering in place, but yeah. still working, um, still working extremely long hours. It feels as if I'm working even longer than yeah. when I was actually in the office. Exactly. At least you got a chance to get out and get some fresh air, right? But uh, hey, exactly. we, have to do what we have to do right now. Um, exactly. So I actually Bronx, miss going up and down subway steps, say, if you oh, can believe it. That was your exercise for the day, huh? That was my exercise, yes. Yeah. Uh huh. Now you got to find some steps, even if there's two, and just go up and down those steps. Or just do high stepping inside. Yeah, you know how to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So tell us yeah. about the impact of COVID-19 on the borough of the Bronx. So by every reporting, the New York is the epicenter of COVID-19. And the epicenter, in the epicenter is the Bronx. It has the highest um, per capita rate of COVID-19 cases and deaths. Yes. Um, as of, as of um, the April 19th or 20th, the Bronx had 1,962 cases per 1,000 1, people. Um, that was leading, it's, you know, we've been working so hard trying to, um, trying to publicize the fact that the Bronx is 62 out of 62 in the state in terms of health outcomes. And we've always yeah. wanted to be first. We never wanted to be first though with the COVID-19 um, pandemic, but here we are um, dishearteningly so, but not surprisingly so. So being number 19, do you think that's one of the reasons why the Bronx has been hit so hard? Uh, being number 62, you mean? 62, Absolutely. being number 62. It, it, it should not be a surprise to anyone. It should not be a surprise to our leadership. It should not it be a surprise to policymakers. It should not be a surprise um, to healthcare providers. It, and I'm sure it's not a surprise to Bronx residents. When you're in the Bronx that has uh, New York State's highest rates, worst rates of asthma, hypertension, obesity, diabetes, then why would we not have the worst rates in terms of COVID-19? There's so many things that, you know, when they talk about the risk factors, one, the, the things I just listed are the health risk factors, but the social risk factors are also very much prevalent here. When you talk about crowded housing, Right. Yeah. When you talk about pollution in our atmosphere, when you talk about people can't get access to quality, healthy food, when you talk about um, people being poor and therefore they are the um, taking jobs that are on the front line, they cannot shelter at home because they're the ones that are delivering food, working in the groceries and the bodegas, um, being out there having to be in the very midst of how you how you can contract the virus then it's not surprising that this we are the epicenter of the disparity in COVID-19. Yeah yeah so it's 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 been really really bad I mean has it hit certain groups more so than others? Of course it has so so we have the um, the, geographic, the geographic distribution of COVID-19 cases, right? But um, we know we are seeing now data on, on the um, disparate impact on race and ethnic groups. And so the disparate impact is on African-Americans 
and Latinos. The Bronx is the borough that's the only borough where the majority of people are black and brown, are African, are, are black Americans and, and Latinos. So, so yes. Geographically and racially, we are bearing the burden of this. Yeah. So this has just put a bigger magnifying glass on the whole thing. I mean, everything involved that's contributing to this. COVID-19 is just a big magnifying glass. It does. It does put a big magnifying glass. It, I, you know, I've been saying it puts a spotlight on it. But again, um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm concerned when I hear people who should, our leadership who should know better, sort of be surprised themselves. The Bronx Health Reach has been part of a, um, an action group. Once we, once we got the report from the Robert Wood Johnson yep. um, County Health Rankings, uh, Health Rankings report about six years ago, Bronx Health Reach, um, Montefiore Health Center, the, the New York City Health Department, even the bar president, we came together and we formed something called Not 62, the Campaign for a Healthy Bronx. Yes, I remember that, mm-hmm. yes. Exactly, and we have been working diligently to bring this, atten- uh, bring this to the attention of our leadership. We were glad to have a sit-down meeting with the mayor, um, Towards the end of November, and we had another. We had a meeting with the borough president to say, "Hey, um, what is going? What is being done to address the fact that we are consistently um, showing so badly in terms of health outcomes? And there's such a huge disparity between where the Bronx is and where the other boroughs are. And how? What, what's the plan to address it? I mean, we all we." In our meeting with the mayor, we said, you know what, basically you're talking about um, we should be putting together a Marshall Plan for the Bronx in order, to, in order to shift the Bronx from being last in health outcomes every single year. And even before Robert Wood Johnson, it should not be a surprise because the rates of the, of the health issues have been so poor for the Bronx. Yeah. So what do you have in mind now? Do you have like a picture of where this should go or how people should uh, act or react to COVID-19? So I I think there are a a number of um, sort of points that we should talk about. Right now, um, there should be, you know, more testing. We're not seeing um, enough testing happen in the Bronx. We have heard about um, opening up test sites in some of the higher in some of the high hit areas, um, we understand there's some testing site being opened up in Harlem. There's some testing sites being opened up in 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 um, Brooklyn around the central Brooklyn area. Oh. We we need to see um, something similar happen in the Bronx with more testing sites. We yeah. also need to see there is concern in terms of. Um, in terms of people, you know, going into the emergency room because they're showing symptoms, but they're being turned back because they haven't, they sort of haven't had the symptom of the shortness of breath. But then they, they, you know, they go home and they're they're quarantined and they're, they are experiencing the whole thing. So one of the things that we are encouraging people to do, I know the Institute for Family Health, which leads the Bronx Health Reach, um, coalition has set up uh-huh. telehealth. Um, yes. If people go to the institute.org, they will see the telehealth connection that they can check there. So there is that. And then one of the things we, Bob, I'm really glad to speak to you is there's some myths going around that we really want to um, to expose and, and say to folks, hey, well, one of the myths that has been going around not just in the Bronx, but in, in several circles, is that Black people can't get COVID-19. Clearly, the rate at which um, Black people and Latinos are getting COVID-19 and are dying from it should dispel that myth. You can yeah. get it, right? Yeah. We also understand, you know, we know that the mayor and the governor has have issued um guidelines well actually that 
issued orders that we should be following, you know, um, the seven feet social distancing, the other thing, the wearing the mask. Well, there is some real concern and legitimate concern amongst many young African-American Latino men that them wearing a mask in a, um, in a society, in a community where they have been so exposed to racial profiling that they're like, no, we're not going to wear a mask. And that would make us even more vulnerable to the police coming up to us. Wow. And so one of the things we'd like to urge um, the mayor at he's talking and the NYPD is to do some targeted messaging uh-huh. to our young black and brown men about why the wearing masks will not make them more susceptible to um, prof- to be racially profiled and and some clear guidance from the mayor that if any um, incidents of racial profiling by the NYPD of young black and brown men will be dealt with um, severely. I think there needs to be that encouragement and that messaging yeah. that goes out yeah. into our community to help them adhere Charmaine, to, the, can, to the requirements. Yeah, mm-hmm. Charmaine, you have a lot of great information. Do you have a, a website where people can go and find out more about what you're talking about? If you go to bronxhealthreach.org, you will Reach. find yeah, you will find out all our information as well as please. I'm encouraging people who feel that they need to see the doctor but may not have access to a doctor. Please go to the yes. institute.org and um, connect through our telehealth. Thank you so much, Charmaine. Your wealth of information and come back again, okay? Very good. Thank you, Bob, for, um, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Stay safe okay. and God bless you. You too. Stay safe. Thank you. Bye-bye. Charmaine Ruddick, Project Director, Bronx Health Reach. We'll take a break. We'll be back with more on Open.